Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of American Reloader. If it's your first time visiting the channel, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button so you can get notifications of all the new content when it drops. Um, I know it's been a, a pretty good while since the last video and for good reason. Uh, short and simple, reloading supplies are extremely scarce right now as well as ammo. And all of you know that primers are extremely hard to find and that's basically why I haven't been able to reload unfortunately in the past uh, couple months. But hopefully in the meantime, we'll be able to fill the gap with that between now and when my new supply comes in. I'll be able to do some uh, short reviews on firearms, accessories, and gear that I have. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy the videos. And I did take your guys' advice on getting a tripod. I know I was shaky in the last video. I apologize for that. But I was doing the best I could with what I had. And that was uh, holding my phone by hand and trying to do everything by hand. But without further ado, we're going to do the first review on a firearm that I actually picked up uh, last summer. It is a, a pretty hard gun to find. You guys probably tell by the, the, the case here of what it is. Um, it was very difficult to find. You basically got to go on Gun Broker and duke it out because unfortunately stores right now, these are very, very, very hard to find. And if you do find them on Gun Broker, they're a little expensive. But um, this is the h &K Heckler & Coke SP5 Pistol. Um, this is how it ships. It ships and obviously you're going to get a box, but when you open up the box, you're going to get this really, really nice carrying bag. This is probably one of the nicer carrying bags that I've seen come with a firearm. But yet again, we are talking about Heckler and Coke. I mean, this is the best of the best in the firearm industry, in my humble opinion. Um, and also I should state that I am absolutely not getting paid for this review in any way, shape or form, or, um, reviewing the accessories that are on the, the, uh, the weapon itself. I'm just giving you my honest opinion about it and everything that I've done through it. It's not going to be a super detailed video, just a quick overview of the uh, the firearm and all the accessories that I have on it that I've added to it. And uh, we'll go ahead and open up the bag. So, there it is. The famous H&K SP5. Uh, you guys know this is basically an MP5. The only difference between the two variants is obviously the auto sear and the uh, trigger group. All right, this is the semi-automatic uh, civilian version, and obviously the real MP5, the real deal MP5, has that auto sear and has a it can't have a multi-trigger uh, group, which is you know full auto burst, uh, whatever the case. But this is how the gun ships. You're gonna get the pistol, but actually, guys, this is not a pistol anymore. Um, it will ship bare bones. It's not gonna have anything on it. It's not going to have the stock. It's not going to have the rail, the optics. You're just going to get the pistol format of the gun. It'll ship with a bungee sling, your user's manual, your rear sight tool, adjustment tool, two standard 30-round German metal magazines, and obviously the pistol itself. Um, so we'll go from muzzle to stock of everything about the gun and what I've added to it. As you know, this is the H&K SP5 9mm. This is not the 22 version. This is not a PTR. This is not a Zenith. This is not This is not a clone, guys. This is a real deal H&K made in Germany. On the same assembly line as the actual MP5. Um, so, yeah, obviously there's some things that are different about it. it. I mean, it still looks like an MP5, as you can see, but I have added some personal tasteful touches to the uh, firearm. Um, first being, this is actually a... Registered SBR, okay. For those of you who don't know what SBR is, that is a short-barreled rifle. So it's any any rifle with a barrel less than 16 inches. If you want to put a fixed stock on it, you have to go through the ATF, pay your tax stamp of $200, fill out your paperwork, send it in, and uh, wait. Um, obviously, I have added the stock on it, but I've also added the suppressor. So this is a double-stamped MP5. So obviously, you got the suppressor in the stock, and you have to pay a tax stamp for both the stock. And the suppressor. That's two hundred dollars each. Four hundred dollars total in stamps, minus the cost of the suppressor and the stock itself. So first up, we have the uh, Omega Nine K suppressor. This is made by Silencer Co. This is a pretty neat little can, guys. This is super lightweight. It's pretty quiet. Honestly, I think it's the lightest and quietest can in its class. This is for nine millimeter, but it is rated up to three hundred blackout. Um, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, guys, I th just to be on the safe side, I want to say it's rated for subsonic 300 blackout, but I could be wrong. It could be for supersonic as well. But 
Um, it does have the Silencer Co. 3 lug uh, insert in there, so you can put it on a 3 lug mount, which as you know, MP5s all ship with uh, 3 lug adapters already on the barrel, as well as a one half by 28 direct thread mount with a thread protector on there. And I've shot this can with subs. It's very quiet, guys. It sounds like a really loud clap, and that's not too loud. It's hearing safe. It's it's not really too expensive. Um, you know, obviously, the, the worst part about a can is, is waiting on the ATF to clear your paperwork. But it's worth it in the end if you guys really want to wait. So, yeah, that just basically snaps on the place. Secure that on there. And then you have your, obviously, your traditional MP5 uh, Famous 4 handguard. Um, actually really liked this handguard and I wanted to keep it. So it was kind of difficult finding a top rail, which is made by Midwest industries. They have great products, high quality steel or sorry, aluminum, my apologies, aluminum uh, mount here, but it, I wanted to keep that handguard on there. So it was kind of difficult to, I wanted to keep the handguard on there. Sorry, while mounting a flashlight on there. It was kind of difficult to find that combination of parts. So I did some research, and it turns out Midwest Industries makes this uh, fairly new top rail with M-lock slots on it. Basically, it wraps around the front sight post nice and gently, and it snugs down with a screw back here, and obviously your four claw mount screws right here on the side. And the uh, the light mount is a Odin Works one-inch M-lock light mount. Really good, really high quality. I highly recommend it. And the light is just a... It's not really an expensive light. It's it's a surefire like 600 lumen light. I think you can get them at any gun store for 60, 70 bucks. I mean, that might sound expensive to some guys, but we all know surefire gets very expensive. So we have the surefire light, the Odin Works uh, one inch flashlight mount with its M lock, and we have the Midwest Industries uh, top rail claw mount with M lock slots that goes all the way to the front sight post, and then for my optic and my optic mount for the optic i went with a trigicon sro 2.5 moa red dot sight let me go ahead and move this uh gun case out of the way before it falls down set that down for a second anyways i went with the uh trigicon sro 2.5 moa red dot sight this is a, a great red dot sight it's very compact it's very lightweight it's it's awesome I'll let you look down there. I don't have it on right now, obviously, but this is fairly new. It came out, uh, I want to say, a couple years ago, a year ago, and I kind of had my eyeball on it for a while now. I wanted to pick one up, but just got around to get one a few months ago. And for the mount, I have a LaRue Tactical, a, a QD mount, which means you can pull that back, flip up, pull back, and this actually comes off. And if you zero it and you put that back in the same spot, it will hold its zero very, very well. And it is a, a QD mount. It's actually technically made for the RMR, but the uh, SRO and the RMR have the same mount footprint. So any mount that you buy for an RMR will work for this. And <clears throat> um, this was actually difficult to do research on because I actually wanted a uh, non-co-witness uh, optic on there. And for those of you know, who uh, don't know what a co-witness or non-co-witness is, co-witness basically means that the Optic is in perfect alignment with your front sight post. I don't really like that, guys. It's just my personal preference because I don't like crouching all the way down, getting extremely close to the, you know, the stock here, cheek weld on the stock. Because the MP5 stock, you know, it's not really the best for cheek weld. So that's mainly the reason why I went for a non-co-witness um, uh, uh, setup, basically. And that... The non co witness basically allows me to review this entire field of view of the optic here. Let's see if you guys can see. Will not co witness with that front side post. So I don't see that front side post. Uh, you know, to me, that's really annoying. I just want to see the red dot and, and whatever I'm shooting at, you know, target practice or whatever. So some of you may want a, uh, a witness, you know, co witness sites. You can bring that down obviously a lot more and they make a flush mount for it that will co witness with that. You'd probably have to get a lower mount, lower hugging mount for that. But I think uh, Midwest Industries probably makes, honestly, <clears throat> the best mount for this setup. Um, but yeah, so that's the Trigicon SRO and LaRue Tactical QD mount. And I went ahead, and this is another thing I highly suggest when you guys, if you guys are thinking about getting this pistol and turning it into an SBR, that is changing out your uh, rear sight. Because when this thing ships with a pistol, it actually ships with the same sight as the... Um, um, SP or the uh, um, SP5K or yeah that variant which is 
not the same as the traditional MP5 rear drum sight. Definitely, you're going to want to change that out because this is closed up here. It's, it's, it's a whole lot better, and you guys know that MP5s have some of the best iron sights on the market, and you definitely want to get that traditional uh, rear drum sight. As well as for the stock, the stock I believe is ATI. It's ATI stock. It's it's not a German stock, but that's okay. It's I haven't really noticed the any quality differences between the two. Um, it's the newer like A3F style stock, so you get a better cheek weld here. It's made a really nice, comfortable butt pad. The original original uh, you know stock was basically straight down. It was kind of uncomfortable to me. I didn't really like it, but. I went ahead and ordered the ATI stock, considering that the German stock is a hell of a lot more expensive than the uh, ATI stock. And to me, they're they're basically the same. Multiple position stock here. You can ship this in and out like that. Collapse it all the way down. It's very, very compact. You can put it in a backpack, put it in your truck, whatever you want to do. Go camping with it, whatever your desire is. And obviously, you can take it back out. And that's that. But yeah, guys, this is the uh, that's basically it. This and all. Oh, and you also have a uh, paddle mag release for your magazine, as well as a button release. It's pretty standard on all MP5s. Obviously, your safety selector here. It's a semi-automatic, so you're not going to have that fun switch. Unfortunately, maybe one day. Um. Yeah, that's basically it, guys. I mean. It's the famous H and K MP5 SP5 whatever you want to call it. it really doesn't need an explanation. If you guys have any questions about this firearm, um, the accessories where I got them, uh, prices, anything like that, feel free to leave a comment. I'll do definitely do my best to respond to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get back online here soon with another one, and we'll see how that goes. Thanks guys for stopping by, and once again, if you're new, hit that like and subscribe button, and we will uh, hopefully get you guys some new content soon. See ya.